Okay, I need those results ASAP. Thank you. How did it go? Well, you did your best. Have you got that X-ray? What X-ray? Call you back, sir. I think she's booked in for the morning. Did I say I could wait? You said to order To it. be done straight away, please. Dr. Cullen, we need you. She's like a can. Go from the RTA? Yeah, she lost consciousness on the way back from X-ray. No reaction to painful stimuli. Cranial bleed left side. Straight into the theatre. Call anaesthetist and get her intubated. Talk to you on CT scan, please, as soon as there's a slot available. And alert neurosurgeon. And Chloe Baxter's X-ray. Dr. Young, that was Shaz. I saw her. I'm coming, Blake. Maddie, wait. Um, that kid on Darwin, Davy. They lost him. Oh, God. Um. Okay, go and get some dirty pan. That should keep him together so his folks are over. <laughs> and one sleeping tablet. You took your time. Well, I was having a massage and a pedicure, wasn't I? <laughs> You're right, Mr. Hales. <coughs> yeah. Can you sleep? Oddly enough, no. Sorry. I can't stop coughing. There's all sorts of happening down there as well. Um, why don't you, uh, oh dear, why don't you, um, have a glass of water? Hmm? Thank you. Hit a bit. Grace is okay. Still waiting for a theatre. Hang on. So I uh, had a go at you. <laughs> I told her there was a problem with the stair gate. Mrs. Beecham. She turned her phone off. She's probably in theatre. I thought she's one of those mums who turns her phone off so the nanny can't kick up. I must have tried her like 20 times. I, I said to her, you have to ring me. 20? Anyway, like you say, she was she's probably saving people's lives. Yeah.
please. Uh, I'm sorry about the police thing, all right? I don't want to hear it. OK, Carl, I know who you are. I'm going to call the police now. The real police. I don't know why you're doing all this macho stuff. I'm calling the police. Just as soon as I can get a signal. Hey, mate. I'm not trying to hurt you. Just give me two minutes, then make your call. You used false pretenses. You wouldn't have to spoken to me if I said who I was. Of, mine of a murder she absolutely did not commit. Now that's I don't right. believe it. She suckered you. Like she suckered my dad. Shut up. He's dead. Just like that guy in Dubai. It's completely unfounded slander, and I'm going to advise Faye to take out an injunction against you. Have you any idea how much danger you're in? Fifty thousand pounds. Do you honestly think that Faye would murder someone for fifty thousand pounds? <laughs> Fifty thousand? Is that what she told you? None of your business. Missed out the bit about the other hundred K. You're lying. A hundred thousand in cash. Connie, this is free. I was going to call. Option levels are low. I should need more peep to get her into theatre. Right, come on, let's go. I need to speak to you. Two levels very low. That's not going to be improved until her diaphragm's fixed. Connie. That wasn't good with money. I mean, he made plenty of it, but he lost it, too. Dodgy deals. Always in trouble with the taxman. Doesn't sound like he would have £100,000, then. He called it his rainy day money. Oh. You know, off the books. I saw it the day we had our big bust up. Just after Mum died. Bundles of notes in a tatty old suitcase that used to belong to my granddad. It was Dad's Joe. His granddad was a refugee from Germany in the 1930s. Came here with nothing. Just this little brown case. Dad liked the idea of stuffing it full of cash. Like getting his own back on history. Your father was terminally ill. You don't get much more of a rainy day than that. After he died, I went to the house. Dad used to hide the case behind a hardboard panel at the back of the old immersion heater. It wasn't there. So? Even if he'd spent the money, he'd have kept the case. It was a family heirloom. I took the place apart. Couldn't find the case anywhere. Someone must have taken it. That could have been anybody. But like you say, she wouldn't have killed him for 50 grand. But 150. Your father died of natural causes. That's why I never I went to the cops. Said, but then I heard about this James guy in Dubai. And it was like everything pointed at Faye. Natural causes? Just because someone's dying anyway, it doesn't stop them being murdered. You had an argument with your father, he cut you out of the will. This is not going to put that right. Ask her. Ask Faye about the money, and then you'll know. And then... Then it's down to you. They'll believe you. If you've got the guts to do the right thing. Faye did not kill your father. Now, I have some sympathy for what's happened to you. I think perhaps it's time you let it go, don't you? I can't. I'm not going to call the police this time. But I don't want to see you again. And if you go near Faye, you'll be in big trouble. Understand me? Good. How is she? She's stable. That's the best I can say. The thing is, I've got Blake Hennessy, you know, the kid that was driving. And I haven't told him anything about the fatalities yet. OK. When did you last search in the tracky tube? God's sake! I'm not interested in Chloe Baxter! I've got a boy back there that's going to need a bit of good news. Now, can you tell me anything about the prognosis for Shazia Khan, which might be positive in context of him having killed half his mates? No, I can't. She's probably got permanent brain damage. Fantastic. This oxygen saturation won't recover if you don't regularly search in the tracky. Mr. Cullen, carbon monoxide poisoning coming in from ED. Do it, please. Where was he? In the cafe. Did you talk to him? A few words. He ran off as soon as he saw me. I think he's gone now. Good. There's no, you were right. Um, Seeing him again, he does cut a bit of a sad figure. Yeah. I think it'd be hard on anyone losing a parent and then finding that they've been cut out of the will. You, uh, weren't ever tempted to share it with him at all. <laughs> Joseph, what did... No, I'm sorry, I'm not blaming you. Well, it... it sounds like it. Well, these things are always a source of contention. Sometimes uh, a bit of generosity at the right time is... Like it, it's, 
Let's get this straight. Carl went to three public schools. He was expelled from them all. Drink, drugs, gambling, crackpot business schemes. When Donald finally cut him off, it was for his own good as much as anything. To give him a share of the inheritance would have been like... like throwing it straight down the toilet. It's, uh, it's gone now, right? Yeah, as you well know. Yes, I'm sorry. Well, you should be. I'm trying to understand what we're driving to make this kind of accusation. You know? Can't just be the money, can it? Okay. I don't want to talk about this any more. <laughs> How much more noise can you actually make? It was an accident, all right? Look, he's obviously too ill to go to the toilet. Why don't you give him a bedpan and give us some peace? Just ignore him, Mr. Hales, all right? Do you need a hand? I'm going to do this alone. At last, some peace and quiet. Excuse me. What's this? Look familiar? Well, why should I have to take pills when someone else is keeping me awake? You know what, Mr McGibbon? You are nothing but a selfish little bully and I've had enough of it. How dare you, you obnoxious little tart! Oh, excuse me, what is going on? Your nurse has been abusive. Mr McGivern put a sleeping tablet in Mr Hales's water. Well, if you'd done something about it from the start, a, a, a little sympathy, perhaps. Now, first of all, my staff do not have to tolerate verbal abuse. Well, she started it. And it is incredibly dangerous to interfere with another patient's medication. This can't go unrecorded. Yes, all right. Nurse Jackson. How come he had the tablet? Didn't you watch him take it? I've got better things to do than stand around getting grief off some narky old git like Kenneth McGivern, thank oh, you very much. I'm letting him wind you up, come on. Well, frankly, Faye, after the night I've had, I can't be asked. <sighs> you just put your hands in here for one right? <laughs> Mr Cullen, what do you want me to do with him? Can't box you, hemoglobin at 12. OK, let's get him an oxygen saline. If his GCS drops below 14, I want to know about it, OK? Look, I think you should know he's one of our regulars. You know, hanging, wrists, bleach, you name it, he's tried it. Psychiatrics? They can't get anyone here till morning. I'll leave it to you, then. <sighs> Tracheal bronchi tree looks clear. So that's a 92%. It's getting a bit tricky here. Mm. It's no clots, there's no secretion. No, obviously. Right, x-rays... Connie. Please, I understand your concern, but I have to have you respect my authority in this theatre. You can order the X-ray or not. Of course. Thank you. You page the on-call radiographer, please. This is a farce. 